It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the hardest. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to those who take it. Who take it. So we're here with Troy Bannister from Startup Health, who heads up our Startup Health Insights. We just published the Q3 2015 Insights Report. Um, So, Troy, what were you most intrigued by in this quarter's data? There's a lot of new trends and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing right off the bat that we noticed, and we're looking at the full macro scale of digital health, is the the funding is starting to catch up with last year. Uh, The Q1... And last year was a record Which was year. a record year. So the Q1 of 2015 this year was really slow start, but now we're seeing that Q, now that we're up to Q3, it's matching the record year again. Yeah, and I, I think um, one of the other things is there's, there's still a lot of money flowing in, yeah. but to fewer deals. Right. What, what's that tell you? So we're seeing a pretty obvious trend um, in the maturation of the market. I mean, kind of what you just said, there's significantly less deals. Um, last year, there were about 560 deals. This year, there are about, so far, 312. Um, so you can kind of think- And that's at the as of the end of Q3? Right. So we're thinking maybe there's going to be around 400-something deals at the end of, of 2015. Um, still 150 deals, about less than last year. So um, with that taking into account, it's a lot more money going into less deals, uh, more mature, later stage deals. So there's a little bit um, less seed rounds and less um, Series A rounds, which is, again, an, um, just a sign of a maturing market. And there's what close to five billion dollars invested. Three, f- what four point seven billion invested 4. 7, um, as of the end of the quarter. Right, uh, as a total, and we were at about one point eight five uh, for Q3, um, which was pretty close on par to last year for Q3. And one of the interesting trends that's it's really been happening over the last couple of years, but the di- diverse investor landscape, mm-hmm. uh, corporate venture moving in. Uh, early stage VCs, later stage VCs, but also VCs uh, that historically haven't invested in digital health. Yeah, what, totally. are your, what are your thoughts there? Um, so, yeah, right on point. Um, we wouldn't have seen corporate VCs in this landscape about three or four years ago. Now we're seeing um, around 10% of the funding coming from corporate VCs and in more institutionalized um, investments. Um, a great example, too, which isn't a corporate VC, but um, Zafri, uh, kind of a PE shop is now doing somewhat early stage investing. Um, and they're up there right with, you know, the con- or the, the Venrox and the, um, the, the really, you know, h- household name VCs. And who's, where's the money flowing? What, where are investors putting their money? What sectors yeah. are, are attracting a lot of capital? So it's changing a little bit. Um, for a long time, we saw big data analytics as the big number one um, subsector. Um, we're seeing now more patient and consumer experience um, focus. Um, things like patient engagement, um, things over like over a billion dollars. Over right? a billion dollars. We actually include telemedicine in that. Um, you know, it's it's the same care a person would get going to the doctor. The only thing changed is the, they're visiting the doctor now through a, a phone or a computer. Um, so things like that are really revolutionizing healthcare, bringing um, healthcare from the hospital back home. Um, which is kind of where we really focus our efforts is, you know, what does healthcare look like in 20 years from now? We think it's all going to be at home, all data driven, um, things like like this that change the way patients and, and consumers experience healthcare is is kind of what's on the horizon. Yeah, it's interesting. People talk about, oh, is there a, is there a bubble bubble in healthcare? A billion dollars in into patient consumer experience. I think Goldman recently came out with a. Uh, a stat that they believe it's a telemedicine alone is a $12 billion market. Yeah. So you see how big some of these uh, opportunities are and, and how much, um, you know, growth opportunity there is signals why I think a lot of the money's flowing um, to some of these sectors. Um, genomics. Yeah. Uh, One of my favorites. And consumer genomics, precision medicines also seems to be a lot of activity. Yeah, so that's kind of another thing we kind of focused on is 
um, that we're kind of seeing is kind of this blurring line between consumer medicine, um, like 23andMe, like 23andMe, and then clinical genomics and biotech, um, really advanced, really clinically, you know, scientific um, processes that are moving into the consumer space. Um, we're seeing some, you know, resistance in policy and regulation. We saw 23andMe's FDA issue before, but they're starting to navigate through that. They're starting to, they're now diagnosing um, um, certain types of diseases all through the consumer, which is unheard of. Um, 23andMe was one of the big investments of the year, too. I think they received around $80 million this year. Um, so really exciting to see what they're going to be doing with it. And there's new uh, entrance in, into the insurance space. Oscar's been raising yep. a lot of money. Yep. Um, that's been interesting to see those deals. Clover. So Clover, yeah. Um, very interesting big deals. And and um, wanted to, what are some of the the top deals that have happened that are um, under $10 million? Mm -hmm. um, really diverse. So we, we kind of take like a, you know, core sample of what's going on in between the high investment and the low investments around $10 million to get just what's what's going on around there. Um, very varied, very varied. Um, genomics, again, is up there. Patient and consumer experience, sensors, wearables, um, healthcare IT, enterprise solutions for the bottom line, things like that. All sorts of activity. And I think historically, everybody assumed the money was Silicon Valley, Boston, mm -hmm. New York, and yes, there's there's a lot of money there. Mm -hmm. um, where else is the money coming from? Yeah, well, Silicon Valley is number one. Obviously, they they get I think three times more than the, the second place um, geographic location. Um, but we're seeing some interesting um, innovation coming into Seattle. Um, there's a lot of biotech companies there. Um, there's a lot of tech companies there. Amazon um, with you know Amazon Web Space. Um, they're just de developing a lot of money moving into there. I think Alibaba's considering opening a headquarters there. Um, a few other big tech giants, Microsoft, obviously. So there's a big talent pool there. Um, as healthcare becomes more of a mainstream type of solution um, for money to flow to, um, I think that that talent pool is kind of attracting people and money to find solutions around that that area. So what are you, what are you most excited about? Um, good question. Um, I, I love genetics. I think genetics is an unopened can of... Um, potential, um, not only in, in diagnosing people for high risk, um, you know, diseases ahead of time, but also for insights into how to live a better, healthier lifestyle. Um, I think it's going to give way to a lot of drug development. We're going to see so many new um, um, medications and, and drugs come out of um, all this data we're collecting. Obama's initiative is really interesting. Some government support to centralize all that data. Um, there's a lot of countries around the world doing the same thing. And once all that amasses into one, um, database is going to be really interesting to see what happens. So, Troy, where where can people find out more about the insights you've been sharing today? Um, our websites are a great place, um, as well as we publish a weekly newsletter that kind of tracks weekly funding. Um, I believe it's startuphealth.com backslash reports. Great. Thank you so much. See you next time.